This is my favorite release from Omega Days 2022, the Moonwatch Moonshine in Green. Omega just launched their latest creations for 2022, and I got to go to Miami to check it out. If you've been following my Instagram, then you've been seeing that I've been posting a lot of the new pieces. And today I'm gonna go over my favorites and also the entire release. I gotta say, the Omega Days 2022 presentation has left such a big impression in my mind that I'm still thinking about it even though I'm here at Watches and Wonders. I'll start in order of the Omega Days 2022 presentation, but skip ahead in the chapters below for your favorites. And if you have any questions, you can email us at sales at caraco.com. Carrot Co. is an authorized dealer for Omega for over 25 years, located in Flushing, Queens, New York. Now, let's get into it. So a week before Omega Days, Omega hinted on their Instagram a new Planet Ocean dive watch with no helium escape valve. That will come to be revealed as a Seamaster Planet Ocean Ultra Deep. This would result in a massive 45.5 millimeter dive watch with a thickness of 18 millimeters and reveal seven new models. Six of the models are in stainless steel, either on bracelet or rubber strap with blue, black, white, blue, and brown orange accents, and one in titanium, which feature fixed manta lugs, meaning that it can only be worn on a NATO style strap. Let's start first with the titanium. That one is a recreation of the ultra deep planet ocean that explorer Victor Vescovo had piloted in 2019 and two Omega ultra deep watches had survived the world record depth of 10,935 meters in the Mariana Trench. When the watches resurfaced, it was retested and it passed with flying colors. The original piece was even thicker and larger and the mantle lugs was a function first simple innovation to remove the usage of spring bars. So my favorite of this release is the black and blue combination. It's in stainless steel and that baby blue with the dark black accents just looks so great together. Inside is a master chronometer, 8912 caliber, no date version with a jumping hour and it has a 60 hour power reserve. To be honest, the watch size sounds massive and yeah, it definitely looks massive, but trust me when I say that it definitely wears better on the wrist than the paper dimensions suggest. And I definitely don't have the wrist to wear it, and on the stainless steel versions is Omega's new compound of Omega Steel. It's like a white gold version looking of steel. It's supposed to be brighter and whiter. I guess you can compare it to Rolex's 904L steel, and it's most noticeable when you have it side by side to a standard 316L stainless steel watch. On the steel versions, on the bracelet, the watch comes in at 11,600, on rubber strap, 11,200, and for the titanium with the mantle lugs, that is 12,300. Now this one is a new Seamaster Diver 300 in deep green color on either a bracelet or rubber strap with tang buckle. Obviously this is one of Omega's most popular dive watches in 42 millimeters and has iconic features such as skeleton hand, wave dial, helium escape valve at 10 o'clock, and the newest thing here is the color green. Like most color dials, this green is not flat, but in bright lighting you'll get a rich vibrant green, while in darker lighting it can pretty much go almost black. And right now, green is such a popular color in the industry, not just the watch industry, but also in fashion, apparel, clothing. So it was a no-brainer for Omega to come with a new version of their own green Diver 300. Keep in mind that in early 2020, Omega had launched the Seamaster Aquaterra 41 mm with a dark green olive dial. And from that popularity, it was bound that green would come to the Diver 300 series. The best way to describe the green on the Diver 300 is that it reminds me a lot of the Glasshutta original CQ Reed Green. And I love that green so much because it's not such a big bright green, but it has like a lot of depth and dark colors with it. So it looks great. The price on the Diver 300 on bracelet is 5,400 while on rubber strap is 5,100. This one took the Instagram watch world for a storm since look at all the new colors on the new Aquaterra 38 and 34 millimeters. The Aquaterra 38 millimeter in stainless steel has been one of my favorite sleeper Omega watches because it balances the category of being a one watch category or as the name suggests, one for water and one for land Aquaterra. Previously, my favorite 38 millimeter was the white dial with black indices since it created that stark contrast and always looks good dressy or casual. And now we can say hello to five new colors in 38 millimeter, such as terracotta red, Atlantic blue, bay green, sandstone gray, and saffron yellow slash orange. My favorite of this bunch would definitely be the terracotta red. When I first saw it online, I wasn't sure what to expect. Like I don't expect myself to wear a red dial, but when I saw it in person, it reminds me of Omega's red logo. 
So it feels to me like Omega Red. Maybe that would have been a more fitting uh, name for that. Let me know in the comments below. So the red dial really pops and it just feels really tastefully done and it feels in brand with Omega. Obviously, this is a fun watch. It's not meant to be discreet, but to throw some color on an already great collection. There are also five new pastel colors in the 34 millimeter Aqua Terras. Similarly, they have the sea blue, lagoon green, sandstone gray, shell pink, and lavender. The only color that's the same on both is the sandstone gray. The 34 millimeter has 18 karat white gold for the hands and indices, which are shaped like sailboat hose. And the date window is framed in a nice circular border. What's also new to all of 10 of these Aquaterras is that they all come with a new bracelet which has rounded links which makes sizing the bracelet down to your wrist even better than the previous flat link style. And I'm wondering if you can take the new rounded bracelet and put it on the existing 38 millimeters. Unfortunately, there's still no micro adjustment but I do think that this bracelet is a huge improvement to the flat link style. Also, keep in mind that the new cases are all high polish. So instead of having that band of brush finishing on the 38 millimeter Aqua Terras, you now have high polish all around. And the date window is a little more simplified. It doesn't really have a border. From my memory, the dials have this beautiful sunburst finish to all of them. And that they're different enough from the current 38 millimeters that you could have one of each side by side and still feel like they're completely different watches. Both 38mm and 34mm use the Master Chronometer Omega Caliber 8800, which features a 55 hour power reserve, reliable movement with a date window. When I saw these Aquaterras, I kept going back to take a second and third and fourth and fifth look at them, just because I thought the dials were so much fun. And I just feel like right now in the industry that color is coming back. Instead of being low key and just doing blues and whites and blacks, now you can do red and yellow and green, and there's a lot more fun in the mix. I personally love the red, but let me know what you love. All of these are priced at $6,000, all in stainless steel. New to the Speedmaster family is the new Speedmaster 57. The previous generation Speedmaster 57s never appealed to me personally, and I say that because the case size and wearing dimensions did not fit my wrist well. So when I heard that there was a new Speedmaster 57, I had some interest. Off the bat, these new Speedmaster 57s wear much better than the previous generation since this updated version uses a manual winding Omega Caliber 9906 which brings the thickness down to about 12.99 millimeters and the diameter is now 40.50 millimeters instead of 41.5 millimeter. That one millimeter difference makes a huge difference when wearing the watch on the wrist although the lug to lug is still a little bit long if you were to ask me. My wrist size is around 6.4 inches, so if your wrist size is around 6.8 inches or above, I think you'll have no problem with the fit. Aside from that, the design aesthetic has remained the same with its steel tachymeter bezel, broad arrow handset, two counter layout with a date window at six o'clock. The new changes come in the dial color specifically. Now we have a vintage black with sandwich dial, just like the Seamaster 300, and a blue, red, or green color scheme with applied indices, making it feel like a more modern chronograph. I love the direction Omega is going with their bracelets. This flat link style bracelet is so fitting for the time period of the watch and the style, but it also tapers down and has a small micro adjustment slider, just like the Omega Speedmaster Chronoscopes have. All of the color dials also have some texture on them, and then you'll notice that there's like a black ring around the dial, so either on the sub dial or the main center dial. Originally, I thought the blue one was my favorite, but after looking back through the photos, I have to say that the red has like a deep red wine color, and I think it looks so good on this case. All of these new Speedmaster 57s are priced at $8,600 on the bracelet or $8,300 on the strap. Now, if there was one piece I choose as my top favorite this year from Omega, it's definitely this moonshine gold green moon watch. I did not see this coming at all. And to be honest, I'm not really crazy about yellow gold watches. In general, I always tend to go with stainless steel or white metals, but after putting the moonshine gold moonwatch green dial on my wrist, I was like, yeah, yeah, this is the one. This is the one I want. And I can tell you in person that this green dial looks amazing. It is slightly textured, and you can really see the detailing of the sunbrush green PVD dial across the surface and into the classic Moonwatch step sub dials. First time Omega released a Moonshine Gold Speedmaster was back in 2019 for the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11. 
And if that was any indicator for Omega, that watch became very sought after, not just for the historical reference, but the beauty of Omega's 18 karat yellow moonshine gold. This watch just has that feeling of celebrating something so important to Omega, but at the same time giving it that modern, fun feeling. And the word fun is the best way to describe this green and gold. The bracelet is also phenomenal. It's like that new presidential style that's on the new moon watches and it tapers down to a wonderful 16 millimeters. But this time there is a micro adjustment slider in the clasp, which I'm so happy before because these watches definitely need it. I also love the moonshine gold with the panda dial. And I can't tell if I like this one better on the black rubber strap or the full gold bracelet but the colorway is very symmetrical with just yellow, gold, black, and some splashes of white for the loom. The moonshine gold panda dial has a matching 18 karat moonshine gold step dial, and the moonshine gold bracelet also has micro adjustment sliders. So hopefully we get to see this micro adjustment implemented into the stainless steel clasp on the classic moon watch in the future. Both have Omega's caliber 3861, which is a master chronometer version of our beloved 1861 manual winding chronograph, but now with a stop second, silicone balance spring, anti-magnetic, and it's guaranteed to zero to plus five seconds per day. To be honest, I'm not sure how easy it will be to see either of these watches in the metal, but I guarantee you that you'll be blown away when you get to see it and try it on. The Moonshine Gold Green goes for $34,800 on the bracelet, or $24,600 on the green leather strap, while the Moonshine Gold Panda version goes for $36,500 on a bracelet. It's a little more expensive, keep in mind it's a full gold dial as well, or $26,400 on the rubber strap. Now, as we get into the Constellation Collection, color has also made its way here. This time we have a steel and gold versions with red and sedna gold with steel, with green and yellow gold with steel, on leather or a rhodium gray dial with yellow gold and steel. And finally, there is a classic white dial with blue accents on leather. All four models have smooth ceramic bezels and feature Omega's coaxial master chronometer caliber 8900 with my favorite jumping hour feature. The Constellation collection has always felt a little bit like an underdog collection to me right now, just because it is that integrated bracelet sports watch that the whole industry or the community is really going after right now, but it's part of Omega's family. And I think that there's a lot of heritage um, in this collection from Omega, and they are doing some great stuff like with the new 39 millimeter and the 41, and these new ceramic bezels. I think they're making them more sporty and appealing to our generation. But these new pieces, they retail at 8,700 on the steel and gold on leather, or 6,500 for the steel on leather. The Constellation Quartz Collection also got a small pop of pastel colors in a quick four-piece update of blue, green with diamonds, pink, and purple with diamonds. And this time, the pastel colors also make its way into the Roman numerals that border the outside bezel of the watch. You still get the classic claws on the outside of the case and these large bracelet links that taper down to a nice folding clasp. And finally, in the Constellation Collection, you have the Aventurine 29mm Collection, these have dials made from natural aventurine stone, and thanks to these unique patterns with this earthly material, it means that no two of the same watch are ever alike, all with diamonds um, on the indices and also on the outside bezel. Instead of doing the diamond bezel, you can also do the classic Roman numerals on the bezel. And last but certainly not least, CK859 reissue. This one is kind of like a sleeper release because no one really mentioned it. And the reason why is because Omega had it under embargo, but now it's visible on their website. If you want to see the link, go into my description. I'll leave it there. But this CK859 reissue is inspired by the classic 1939 Omega wristwatch that housed the famous 30-T2 manual winding small seconds caliber. It's a 39 millimeter case in stainless steel and features a vintage Omega logo embossed on the crown. Behind the dome sapphire crystal, the dial is made from 925 silver, which means that it will tarnish over time. Blue to hands, and all markings are transferred in dark blue. There's also a small second subdial displayed at 6 o'clock. You also notice it has a sector dial display going on with just three numerals, 12, 3, and 9. And the 9 also has like that open font, which is really cool. And then the watch is presented on a brown leather strap with a vintage Omega logo on the buckle. Inside the watch is the manual winding Omega coaxial 
Master Chronometer Caliber 8926. It sits behind a polished case back with several engravings, including numbered edition, coaxial master chronometer, and CK859. So these will not be limited edition, but just like the first Omega in space, each piece will be numbered. This CK859 reissue is definitely going to be a lot of people's favorites because it does blend that um, vintage feeling, but with modern technologies. And I think Omega has been doing such a great job at bringing back reissues or just keeping the things that people love on their iconic watches, but then just over-engineering in the movement and the materials. So that's pretty much it for Omega Day's 2022 releases. Let me know which ones were your favorite in the comments below, and like this video if you enjoyed it. It's been a minute, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.